In this video, I will show you the Ender 3 bad leveling process and how to configure your slicer settings. Come and join me! Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss anything. In the last video, I did the Ender 3 unboxing and assembly. Let's recap quickly the results of the build. From what I've seen so far, the Ender 3 build quality seems very nice, the frame is sturdy, the build was not complicated, and I basically had no issues doing it using just the provided manual tools. The only issue I had was that the frame was not standing flat on the surface, so I had to release all the frame screws and then retighten them again to make it stand flush on the surface again. But that's not a deal breaker, I just want to let you know about this, this is an easy fix. Let's talk about some more details now. The Ender 3 comes with a protected power supply, including a cooling fan, no main wires are visible and cannot be touched accidentally, which is good. There is a power switch on the power supply which makes it easy to switch it on and off. And it also has a fuse underneath this little cover here. The main board resides inside of a protective case underneath the printer. There is a fan on top of this case cooling the main board. At the front of the electronics case we find a USB mini port and an SD card reader. All stepper motor cables are clearly marked with little yellow badges like E for extruder motor. Anyways, the cable lengths and different plugs for different motors do not allow for any confusion when plugging in the motor cables. Finally, the heat bed is covered with a removable build tag like sheet that is held to the surface with full back clips. So let's start with the bed leveling to get the printer working with PLA material. We will need a piece of paper for the bed leveling, so make sure you have that at hand. Starting with heating up the nozzle and heat bed. Don't forget about heating up because otherwise your calibration differs from the actual printing situation. Switch on the printer and then go to the prepare menu and select the preheat PLA menu item. Unfortunately, this printer does not have a preheat PLA setup where it heats the nozzle and the print bed and there's no way to set up the printing temperature and the bed temperature for the heating up process independently. This is a feature of the Marlin firm, we're going to talk about that later. So because of that, go to the control menu and select the temperature menu, select the nozzle temperature and set it to the desired printing temperature for your material. I'm going for about 200 degrees, but your material might need different settings, so check first and then dial in the right temperature. Then in the same menu, select the bad temperature and set it to around 50 degrees Celsius for PLA. If you intend to print PLA without the heated bed, skip this step. Now let's wait for the printer to heat up to the selected temperatures. And now open the prepare menu and select the auto home item. The printer will auto home and we will need to disable the stepper motors now to be able to move the X and Y axis motors freely. Do this from the prepare menu by selecting the disable steppers item. Now you can move the X carriage and the bed so that the printer nozzle is above the heat bed in the front left corner. Take the piece of paper and put it between the nozzle tip and the heat bed. Start turning the big thumb wheel underneath the bed corner clockwise to bring the heat bed close to the nozzle. There's also small marks on the thumb wheels which tell you which direction is either up or down. Check frequently that the paper is still movable until you feel a little bit of resistance. Basically when the nozzle is grabbing the paper just a little bit. If you feel that you cannot bring the heat bed up further, which might be normal at the first round, Go around and bring the other three corners quite some amount up and you will see that this increases the tension on the first spring again so you can start again bringing that one up a little bit more. So it's just the first try. Now we should be able to feel the resistance of the paper rubbing against the nozzle and bed. Continue to adjust the other three corners to finish the first round. If you have the feeling that you cannot move the carriage or heat bed to any of the corners, stop 
and increase the tension of the wheel uh, of the corner you're going to to bring down the bed a little bit until you can move the nozzle again to the corner. Be careful to not put too much pressure on the heat bed surface against the nozzle because otherwise you might burn a hole into your heat bed surface. When you have finished the first round of calibration, do another round and you will see that you will have to readjust probably all corner screws to make the distance perfect. Make sure that you can just reinsert the paper between the nozzle and bed and you still feel some resistance. I even did a third round just to be sure I have dialed in the right distances. Now, do a final check for the middle of the print bed. From what I can see, the paper is not being wrapped by the nozzle. That also means the bed might have a slight curve. Now, unfortunately, the printer's firmware doesn't have mesh bed leveling, which is a Marlin software feature. This would allow to fix these little inequalities in the software, so the software would follow that slight curve by adjusting the set offset while the nozzle moves around, so we always get the same amount of pressure on the bed. So one of the next things to do on this printer is certainly flashing the Marlin firmware to it, but before that, I want to download the latest Creality firmware from the webpage to see if there's any new features for bad leveling, for instance. Unfortunately, there is no way to tell from the printer menu which version of the software is currently installed. So we have to find out by flashing the latest version uh, if there's any changes. Next up is to insert some filament into the printer and doing the first test print. For that shape, the filament tip into a little arrow shape using the clipper provided with the printer's toolkit. Now let's hang the spool over the spool holder and insert the filament end into the extruder. Push the extruder release handle to be able to push the filament into the PTFE tube until there's some filament coming out of the nozzle tip. Okay, now basically we're ready to try our first test print now. Uh, let's see what we can find on the SD card that comes delivered with the printer. Insert the SD card into the little slot at the front of the electronics case. Then go to the printer menu and select init SD card. Then the menu item print from SD should be enabled so we can select the test doc file to start printing something. That print finished after five and a half hours, so let's see the results. Well, the printed object did not stick to the bed until the very end of the print. I think somewhere in the last quarter of the print it started moving around the print bed and that's what we see here. So that would just mean upping the print bed a little bit for the next print and definitely looking for some firmware update to get mesh pedaling enabled could fix that issue, but more on that in another video. Looking at the quality of the print so far, I would say it's really decent. Um, I don't see any major issues with any line skipping or layer adhesion or any blobbing. There's also almost no ghosting visible. So I'm impressed from that first print, except that it failed in the last part, but that's not the printer's fault, just some adjustments and this should be fixed. So this was basically a print from the SD card provided with the printer. Let's head over to setup Cura to be able to slice our own prints for this printer and we see what the results we can get with the default settings. For that, I'm adding a new printer profile and thanks to Cura, there's already a predefined profile for the end of three that we can use. So let's start using that and work from there. I'm now slicing a Benchy with default settings for 0.2 mm layer height using a brim for better layer adhesion and no support materials. I've put a link into the description to find the Benchy on Thingiverse for you. Just quickly checking the print and bad temperature, let's keep the defaults and just start slicing. After slicing, copy the file to the SD card. The nice thing is that Cura detects your removable drive, so you can just confirm this and it also offers to check the drive afterwards, which I will do here. Now insert the SD card back into your printer. Because of this previously failed print, I will up the bed leveling for all four corners a bit to have less distance of the nozzle to the bed in the middle of the heat bed. 
Now let's start printing and wait for the result. That looks already really promising. Print time was around one and a half hour. The Benji has a really nice surface here on the side. A little bit of lines visible here. Definitely also some ghosting. The stringing is actually very limited. Maybe it can be removed by just adding a bit more retraction. The overhangs look nice and clean. So no issues here. The default settings already seem to be very good for a kickstart. Overall, I would say this is a decent result for the first print of a Banshee on this printer. I'm going to tune the settings a bit in the next days and get you an update in one of the next videos. That's it for today. If you appreciate this video, please smash the like button, consider subscribing to my channel to support me creating new content for you and hit the bell notification icon if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.